Good day everybody, a rather exciting video to show you today. I'm going to talk about the jewellery of Atlantis, the jewellery that the kings and queens and nobility would have worn, approximately what they would have worn based on what their descendants wore. And this is the National Museum in Ireland and we're going to have a look. I took these photos in 2014, I was absolutely amazed. Except for Bulgaria, the, the Trojan jewels, maybe the Minoan stuff, you do not see jewellery in Europe from this early. I'm talking 3000 BC to 2000 BC jewellery, jewellery that came after. It's unbelievable stuff. It's just absolutely mind-blowing stuff. You just, you, I'll show you, I'll show you some relics which are beyond imagination as well. I had no idea this stuff even existed before I walked in here. Let's take a look. Yours truly, nice building, we're going inside, nice dome, and all the exhibits are sort of arranged, you can take photos, that's a map of the Hill of Tara. And when I talk about Atlantis, I do mean Ireland, UK, Doggerland, the land around it that sank. And only Ireland and the UK are left with some residual islands as well. And this whole empire, they owned, or they traded with Tiwanaku. And they, it was basically everyone outside of the Pillars of Hercules, according to the story. Spain, France, UK, all the, these countries made war with the countries inside the Pillars, in the Mediterranean. They had their own confederation, possibly Sardinia, the precursors to the Phoenicians, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Italians, whomever. And there, was, there would have been epic naval battles, archers, fire archers, etc, whatever, artillery. And it must have been a trade war regarding metals brought from America. And the people in the Mediterranean said, we're putting up our tariffs, we want more money, essentially. A huge longboat, it looks fairly primitive to me, I'm not sure, apparently it's from about 3000 BC, quite long. Not sure what it is. It's, it's a dugout. They did have big trees in Ireland back then. Dugout canoe, 2500 BC. A mace head. Yeah, it's Stone Age. It's not very spectacular. I'll get to the spectacular stuff. More mace heads. 3300 to 2800 BC. Okay, quite nice looking tools. Quite nice looking. But wait till we get to the good stuff. And I'll show you totally links between the Inca world and Ireland and if we look at this whole birds okay yeah it's you know tools okay weapons axes sure yep great nice axes rapiers more rapiers 1400 to 900 iron age and just to give you a, a, an outline, the Iron Age would have been, as a rough guide, the Iron Age is the first millennium BC, the Bronze Age is the second, and the Copper Age is the third, but as we've seen with Egypt, the, the Iron Age can be pushed back to 5000 BC or earlier. And now we're starting to get to the interesting stuff, the Amber, which would have been from the Baltic. Horns, okay. So the Atlanteans, before the Irish, would have blown horns, and they were such good-looking horns. They were quite exceptional. Late Bronze Age. Okay, cauldron, okay. And Iron Age, essentially, they made this out of gold. But this is not the Atlantean stuff just yet. I'll get to that. And then I saw these weird objects, and they don't know what they are. And it actually says, selection of objects, okay, 900 to 500 BC. So, to me, they look molded or machined. They almost look like 20th century hand grenades. I thought, what are these grenades doing here? They're over 2,000 years old. Did you see those dates? They were before Christ in the first millennium BC. What are they? Who knows? These things here look like bits of bagpipes or something, musical instruments. These things, don't know. Not sure. 
Weird, really weird. Look at that. Look at this bizarre old technology. Just, just strange. Um, not sure what to make of that stuff. And we're getting into the good stuff now. Okay, gold balls. See, this is rather interesting. This is... Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Inca stuff. I'm going to show you the Inca gold. This is the Inca gold. Okay. So that's Inca on the right. And that's Irish on the left. These gold balls in the museum, they suggest they're from a necklace. Essentially, they're like the, this necklace here, made up of quite the same thing. Nine gold balls, 800 to 700 BC. Look at that. And these, you know, you can't trust those dates because these... Gold is imperishable, it can be from far earlier, handed down, dug up, handed down again, you see. Uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna bury some of this stuff with, the, with Queen Elizabeth or, or, or the new, God forbid, or, or some of the other the royalty. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, it's, it's 20, 20th century, but it isn't, you see. And something like this, this would have been on this lady of southern Atlantis in Spain essentially it would have been one of these or one of the, one of these and you can see that there would have been a link here these would have been chained up something like this this is the Dama del Elche and it's in Madrid and they think it's 500 BC they say it's Celtic they, they haven't got a clue this is Atlantean stuff you see this was the confederation of, of lands which made war on the Mediterranean states and that's recorded in Egyptian history. The Egyptians know because they came from Atlantis. They were partly refugees. More jewellery. A clasp. This is for your cloak. They might have dressed similar to the Roman senators. This is 800 to 700 BC. And this stuff, these are called lunulas. These are 2000 BC, according to the museum. So, this is the really Atlantean looking stuff. This stuff, this would have been around the neck. And I just want to show you an Inca equivalent because the Incas had something similar. Look at that. And these are found in graves in Ireland from 2000 BC or earlier. Really old graves. Just gold and bones and, and these things. So the children of Drowned Atlantis were wearing this sort of gear and the Incas wore the same sort of gear and as the Irish fashion for jewellery changed as I'll show you, so did the Inca fashion change and it became like this in the first millennium. That's second, third millennium BC. And there would have been gold earrings. Do you see the similarity between these earrings and what the Incas had? I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's just, uh, it's just crazy. The Spanish lady as well, something similar. They've put them on differently in their larger ones. These things here, these bangle things, they could be similar to those grenades I showed you earlier. You know, who knows what they are, I mean. Just so weird and, and strange and odd, I mean. I'm really not sure about that, what those things are. Again, the Irish stuff, the Inca stuff. And I'm going to show you a lot more. So, in the... the, the, the uh, the 3rd millennium BC, they would have had something like this. And you look at the intricate workmanship on the gold, it's unbelievable. I'll compare it to the Inca one again, just so we can compare. And if we just look at that, uh, you know, it's just unbelievable. 
it's different, different designs, but you can see the common origin. The earrings. This is Irish. That's Inca. And it gets it gets closer as we get to the first millennium BC. Again, this is the workmanship on these lunulas. Just amazing. So when they made war on Athens, pre-Athens, all this, those kings, they dressed up in this gold finery and they, they were arrogant. And this is more like first millennium stuff. They started to twist the gold into this sort of stuff. I'm not sure if the Incas had that. That's a bit different. Gold torques, they're called. Not sure about those. Beads, gold and amber. So something like that, very old, very old. And that would relate to the Atlantis story. The earrings. And as we move into the Iron Age, now this, I found this bizarre. What do you think this is? This is a woman. They're calling this in the museum a depiction of an ancient Irish woman wearing ancient Irish jewellery from the first millennium BC. And if you compare it to the Inca stuff on the right, I mean, you tell me what's going on. It's quite similar. Ear spools. Okay, these ear spools do look a lot like what's going on with that Spanish lady. Here's another, a different picture of the Spanish lady I'm just going to bring up in a second. Ear spools. Okay. An earring. And this is what that Irish lady was wearing in that in that diagram. It's just bizarre stuff. I mean, why is it so close to what the Incas wore? Why? You can tell me why. The answer is obvious. Hirakosha, trade links. No one talks about this. No one wants to know. No one wants to talk about it. It's unpublishable in journals. I mean, you could try and publish something like this. They're going to say, whoa, huh, the Incas and the Irish, very separate cultures. But if you look at the stuff, I mean, I actually showed someone the Irish jewellery in a hostel, someone from Latin America, and, and she said, wow, very Inca. And she didn't even know what I was showing her. She, I, didn't, I hadn't yet explained it to her. And so that says it all, really. Cross of Kong. Yeah, they, they kept stuff in reliquaries like this later on in Ireland. Something else I want to show you, a boat. This is a model of a boat from the first century BC, or much earlier, and it's so weird looking. I don't know if the Romans made this or who made this. This is bizarre. Doesn't look Roman. This would have been a memory of one of the boats they used to cross the Atlantic, or from the Atlantean days. You see people would have sat here, lots of rowers, but it's just a child's toy, really. And that, you know what, you know what they say? They say it's an offering to a god, of course, everything's an offering, a temple, whatever. Beautiful boat. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I saw that. Very different to that dugout canoe. Ogham stones. Now, this is similar to the Kipu system, in a way. Knotted strings, instead we have scratches. There is some Egyptian stuff in the museum. One final thing I want to show you is some whalebone. And to me, that is so Inca. It says here it's imported from Norway. Uh, so Mayan. So Mesoamerican. It's unbelievable. Okay, thank you.